Hi everybody, it's Colin Andrews in November of 2021. Many will know that I'm an electrical engineer by profession and that I left my career in middle management in British local government nearly four decades ago now because of my um, deeply emotional feeling, my first unexpected sighting of circles produced in 1983, an overwhelming feeling of awe, a feeling that remains with me to this day but now it is because of my research findings that I feel that way. That feeling generates a strong emotional calling, which is separate from an intellectual drive to investigate, measure and locate, etc. This strong emotional feeling comes from the heart, not the mind. This I want to emphasize. It has become clear to me that this difference is important. That feeling led me ultimately to leave my profession and my country as well as my family in the United Kingdom. Why did my first five simple circles in a field of wheat near Stonehenge hold such a powerful charge and a compelling need to look closer? These were simple circles that I termed crop circles. Much of my published research is available in the books that I have either authored or co-authored since the first in 1989, that being an international bestseller, Circular Evidence, that captivated the crop circles and catapulted it into the media spotlight around the globe. I feel very strongly that a war about truth versus lies is what is taking place in society and is very important, which will have long-term consequences. In other words, we must defend the truth if we are to enter a better period. From the very beginning of my research in the early 1980s, there felt to be a call to consciousness. I began talking about it at venues around the world in the 1990s, which frankly, did not go down well. There were scathing attacks on my use of the term consciousness being associated with the UFO subject in particular. Along with a couple of other researchers, one being Dr Stephen Greer, we were accused of turning the UFO subject into a subset of the New Age movement. It is gratifying after all these years to see that it has been accepted by many as the most productive route for research in a number of diverse high strangeness fields. However, it has now moved beyond consciousness being involved. It now raises the question, how should we respond to the calling? What are we being asked to do? The two elderly men who claim to have made some of the early simple crop circles, Doug Bauer, Dave Chorley, admitted to BBC television that it often felt like something was directing them to make those crop circles in the 1980s. You can follow many examples of such claims by others more recently, with researchers also having similar experiences. You can read these in the book, On the Edge of Reality. There have been many carefully recorded examples of events taking place, seemingly in response to meditations, prayers or intuitive direction. As I've already said, these have been observed by researchers and artists who make crop circles. Many of the human circle makers agree with me and have said so publicly. We are in agreement that from the moment of design is selected. Let me say that again. From the moment a design is selected in the mind, whether by our own imagination or by intuition and internal direction, the relevant crop circle generates high strangeness events. It's like a living attractor of kinds. What I believe is the calling for sincere interaction to begin. A call to notice, acknowledge, and react. The question now 
is how to respond. What have we been asked to do? The feeling I've referred to has become more of an agitation which gives me the sense that another shoe is going to drop or that something should be happening that is not. Did we miss something of importance or is there a human aspect to this that somehow has been pushed under the carpet or overlooked? These slides now, these are my uh, aerial, some of my aerial photographs uh, of the evolution of design that has taken place, a small part of it, in the crop circle subject. To spend a few moments to uh, look at those and appreciate what's happening as part of this extraordinary experiment. Some of the experiences ordinary people are having are becoming extremely incongruent with life's experience. What does that mean when there is so little to measure it by? One of the best examples that I have personally experienced with a witness was the following, and that witness was Cynthia, my wife. In the fall of 2007, Cynthia and I were driving through rural wells in the United Kingdom, returning from my brother-in-law's funeral in Aberystwyth on the west coast of Wales. There we were very few places, and most people know this, have visited that beautiful country of Wales, that there really are very few places to grab a coffee, a coffee anywhere on the route, especially if the route is from one side of the country to the other. And so when we entered the little village of Crickhowl on the A479 highway, a very small minor highway, we were delighted to see the tea rooms on our right hand side as we drove south. These are photographs of the tea rooms. It gave the impression of being a former car sales garage with a large glass window facing the narrow highway and a few trees opposite. We sat quietly and stared out of the large window and waited for our coffees to be brought to the table. After a couple of minutes, my eyes were drawn to a small, black, solid black object just above the tree level, gliding at a slow pace parallel with the highway from the direction we had come and towards where we were heading. I didn't say anything to Cynthia as I was trying to discern what it was I was looking at. When it got to within about 200 yards and adjacent to the tea room, it appeared for all the world to be a black plastic garbage bag caught in air currents. But it was on a steady and consistently level path, neither rising or falling, but slowly changing shape all the while. Something wasn't right. It felt like a performance was underway for us to see. I then noticed that Cynthia was also looking at it when I asked her, what is that? Then something quite extraordinary happened, which left us speechless. A flock of around half a dozen crows, in the UK these are known as rooks, appeared from nearby trees and made a beeline directly to the object and began dive bombing at it, attacking it. As it did so, the object became stationary and reacted by changing its shape in a much more rapid succession from a flat surface, which looked like a witch's flying carpet, to a perfect sphere. I have the impression that it was playing or teasing the hostile crows. This went on for a short while. We went outside to, be a, you know, to get a kind of a closer look at it when the object moved away at right angles and at increased speed towards the Black Mountains. Was the object aware of our attention? It certainly appeared to be aware of the crows. What could that mean? I am aware of a case in another part of the world of a white object being seen fairly regularly at a distance, which also looked like a white plastic bag. A colleague flew there with a high-powered camera lens 
and could read on the object the name of a grocery store from where it had originated. So that was uh, no longer a mystery. The Welsh incident was not that, and I can assure you of that. Other diverse objects have been witnessed and filmed, and some of those are here now for you to see. The young man there is the son, Nigel, of my colleague, uh, researcher and friend, Busty Taylor. Uh, he now is uh, an adult with uh, a family of his own, giving some idea of the time, the length of time this has been going on. Today, scientists measure brainwave, human brainwave activity, as well as physical changes in skin resistivity, heart rate, eye dilation, and emotional states, which show that our superconscious mind is aware of events before they occur. In general, the findings of today's technology and knowledge shows us that our internal systems are aware of the future experience by up to six or seven seconds. If we include findings from entanglement theory, such as the conscious ability to remotely view non-local events and or objects, we are changing space-time and distance. In other words, we are ourselves changing reality as we know it, and in my view, can change events by how we think. What has any of this got to do with ET, UFOs, crop circles, or any other subject? I believe it's got everything to do with it. There is a spectrum of emotions, each of which have influence over our feelings, thoughts, and actions. An electrochemical process drives emotions ranging between anger and hate at one end of the spectrum to love and a state of peace at the other. The triggering of a reaction or interaction by an unknown source or unknown object or being suggests that we may already have contact and meaningful interaction. Is this a search or test of which emotion is being triggered? It doesn't take a government to confirm this. It just takes a government to be honest and to do its part in developing a healthy, higher quality consciousness and hence our future. The history of 75 years of lies was a bad call on the government's part and gaining trust in a field which in the best of circumstances could be said to be literally unbelievable is difficult but important. This should not be treated as a fairy tale that we can or they can walk away from. It is an intuitive calling awaiting recognition, trust and reaction. It's awaiting the real spiritual being, the fully evolved human. As I said, and those who follow my work already know, consciousness has been central to my studies now for a long while and to me it represents an unknown intelligent energy field, a, a universal equivalent to grey matter in the human brain, created by past, current and future thought and actions, from which a multiplex of potential exists for directing humanity, among other things. My presentation here today is focused upon the importance of consciously paying more attention to our personal honesty, our intuition and feelings, to pay attention to what comes from our heart. And that I just want to repeat, to pay attention to what comes from our heart. To change our focus toward respecting all living forms as we transition our intentions to a balanced behaviour, a more spiritual and caring human. It doesn't mean the intellectual approach should end, but that our baseline foundation is reset and soon. Looking at today's reality and the importance of here and now, what our feelings can convey about the future. 
and, and really and truly you know can convey about the future remembering that uh, some level our body knows what the future will be and is now in the process of becoming looking at today's reality the following major creators of the future are at play and is why spiritual balancing is so vital i hope that we recognize how spiritually bankrupt our personal consciousness is today and just how badly out of balance we are. I wonder if we are equipped for the job ahead. The current primary players in this challenging reality and changing reality are 1. Global warming, now acknowledged to be on code red. 2. Global human health, pandemic of a new potentially fatal virus with unknown future mutations and long-term effects. 3. Global societal division and discord, which is deliberately created by humans so, so severe that actual proven lies are accepted as truth, leading to global security threat and emotional distress. True potential for chaos. All of these players are missing critical balancing in the form of caring, spiritual connection, and can I say, female energy. Bottom line is that we are out of balance, and it is only we who can do something about it. Remember, entanglement theory shows the human mind can alter space-time and the non-local field. I believe that we can change reality and our personal universal consciousness which will reflect who we choose to be as individuals. We worker bees have our place in all of this. I postulate that today's massive feeling of unease and frustration is partly an intuitive psychic connection with a profoundly different future. To reiterate, paying more attention to our heart and who we truly are and how we behave should be elevated over the intellectual mind that investigates our subjects, as important as that is. This is time to look ourselves in the mirror. I think the master chessboard player is pulling strings there too. There is one repeating message I come across and many of you will have done so too. Maybe we should reconsider the message that has been given over the years during various high strangeness events, such as the message decoded in a unique crop circle. Remember, my view is that we should consider the whole collective, including the product of humans. That is a much larger story, but must be stated here. Also consider the six minute strange metallic voice that broke into the British television program in 1977 and took it over. The messages claimed to be given to many people during ET encounters. True or false, these messages do all mirror what God, Mother Earth, ET or the master chessboard player appears to be screaming in unison as we sit here today. If we accept the right message from the wrong source, does it really matter? Good is good. Add to these our own feelings of agitation, which seem to know that this message is meaningful and timely. Just before I read this message, it is worthy of note that the first crop circle to appear in the United Kingdom was in 1976, in the same area served by the TV transmitter, which carried the strange voice to uh, millions of viewers that night. And to add to the mystery, the famous abduction and UFO ET encounter by a, a Mrs. Uh, Joyce Bowles and her friend Ted Pratt, which took place in November 1976 on a country track alongside that same field in which the first crop circle appeared. Yes, an unbelievable coincidence, don't you think? In retrospect, it appears the stage for multiple events was set 45 years ago. There appears to have been many attempted intrusions 
into the human mind and interaction. Hoaxes and the genuine unknown all represented themselves in what transpires to be a patient learning curve right here in our own backyard, not billions of NASA miles or dollars away on a distant planet, but right here walking in our own footprints. I will read part of the six minute transmission of a mysterious voice which I actually recorded myself live on the 6th of December 1977 and that is another story. Four government investigations took place into this which was heard by an estimated two million viewers in this specific part of southern England and none of them uncovered a hoax although they stated that they thought it probably was one. Part of the message continued. Be still now and listen, for your chance may not come again. All your weapons of evil must be removed. The time for conflict is now past, and the race of which you are a part <coughs> may proceed to the higher stages of evolution if you show yourselves worthy to do this. You have but a short time to learn to live together in peace and goodwill. Small groups all over the planet are learning this and exist to pass on the light of the dawning new age to you all. You are free to accept or reject their teachings but only those who learn to live in peace will pass to the higher realms of spiritual evolution. It does continue but I end my clip just there. The resultant effect upon the past, present and future has been navigated and created by many generations of humans and creatures of all kinds and plants too. Many humans lost their lives in expressing and living these values. Our responsibility, indeed our obligation and survival at this 11th hour is to imprint our personal consciousness with that which guarantees happiness and security, i.e. increased caring, love and understanding ahead of intellectual engagement. What we see in our world today is a paradigm shift. In this rejig is the appearance of chaos and a brief opportunity to find the highest side of ourselves. If we cannot find spiritual connectivity between ourselves and Mother Earth, we enter a perpetual, holographic, self-repeating echo chamber of discord. Coherence, meaning the unified whole, is the goal. Unified love and peace. Thank you for this opportunity.